Hi, welcome to my shop, and uh, we're going to start our footing. Um, if you go online, you can find lists of different carbon error shafts with uh, the appropriate Easton aluminum shaft to use for footing. Somebody else has gone through all the trouble of figuring out all the diameters, which is great. Uh, since we're doing a gold tip 3555, the perfect aero shaft for footing is an Easton aluminum 2117. So here is an old piece of aluminum uh, Easton aero 2117. And um, the first thing we want to do is we want to cut our footings off. And there's a number of ways to do this. I discovered that most uh, aero shops can't do this because they're, you'd think that their high speed saw would be just the thing. However, they're set up for cutting one or two inches off of the end of a shaft. When you ask them to cut a shaft into one and a half inch long pieces all the way down, their jigs don't work that way. So you kind of have to do it yourself. Um, a tubing cutter might seem like be a good answer, but that crimps the tubing end and it won't fit on the carbon. So a good old fashioned uh, hacksaw works. Uh, if you've got a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel, that would work too. I've used both. Um, but uh, quick and easy, a uh, fine tooth hacksaw works just fine. So let's see how I do this. If you look right here, I've uh, simply taken a piece of, um, of tongue and groove board and I've, I've used my table saw to make a little groove in it that's just the right size to snug that arrow shaft in. And I've marked and cut two slots. The first slot cut, if this is flush, will be for my knock end footing, which is approximately half an inch. And this cut is for the point end footing, which is a little shy of two inches. Um, by trial and error, I discovered that this size, 2117, weighs, will weigh about five grains. This one will weigh about um, 20 grains. And so by putting these two footings on one arrow, you add uh, almost exactly 25 grains of mass to the arrow. So in order to do this, we just clamp this down and we'll cut one of the one of the point end ones off like this. I just use my just clamp to the table to work a little bit better. It doesn't really take a whole lot. There we go. Like I said, clamping that to the table would make a big difference. Now, no matter how good you are with a hacksaw, you're gonna not have a perfectly flush cut. If that was working a little bit better, maybe. So you're gonna have to um, spin this thing and flatten it. The other thing is, notice on a properly footed on a properly proper foot here, you want to taper the rear edge of that foot. Um, for a hunting application, that wouldn't be necessary. But for pulling this out of a 3D target with dense foam, if you don't taper the back of this, it's going to really be difficult to remove from the target. At the other end of the arrow, you want to taper both front and rear of the knock-end uh, knock um, uh, footings so that they're smooth and that there's no opportunity for that to create a, any kind of unnecessary drag. On the point end, you don't want to taper the very end. That wants to be dead flat because that's going to flush perfectly up with your insert. So that does not want to be tapered. But this back end definitely wants to be tapered very well. So the way to do that, the way I figured out how to do that, is to simply chuck it into my electric drill. And again, you want to be really cautious that you don't crank the chuck down too hard. Just finger tight will hold it and I use a regular uh, mill bastard file and just spin making, you want to make sure that the drill is turning in the direction that your file is cutting so you want the drill turning towards you if the file is heading this way you can you, I, I once did a whole bunch of them turning the drill backwards which obviously was kind of silly but um, anyway turn the drill on
and that's nice and square now. Next, we want to put that shoulder taper on, and so we're just going to taper. It's not quite as straight as I want. That's a little better. It's amazing how difficult this aluminum is to cut for the file. You think it would cut, it cut like butter, but it really is tough stuff, this aluminum alloy. There we go. Now we're getting there. Okay, that's good. Now, we're going to take our file and hold it at approximately 45 degree angle and set our shoulder for the taper. If that comes right down to a feather edge on that inside, that is just fine because that's going to snug right up against that carbon shaft. Be fine. I've got a little bit of a wobble in there. Uh, not exactly the best for a demonstration, but you get the idea. I would then take a piece of sandpaper because we are going to be gluing this and uh, we want to make sure the other side is also nice and square okay that's good and while it's still in the drill just take a small piece of sandpaper and roll it into a tube and run that in and out of there while it's spinning a couple of times like that. And that will prepare the inside of that shaft to receive our epoxy glue. So now there we go. We've got the rear taper, we've got this squared, and it's ready to mount on the arrow. Now, uh, the other one will be exactly the same. I uh, just want to cut it shorter. You might want to make sure that, that the length of taper you do for that knock end will actually fit in the chuck. Some drills won't, you, you can't get it, it's too short. To fit the chuck so you want to test that first but mine with a half inch sticks out just enough so that i can get those tapers done so there you go that's how that's done and when we come back we'll be set up for the next process